well. Let's take a look at this, uh, the long definition of command, which I think is one of the best things about season three's companion guide. So make sure you've downloaded that. It leads, um, alphabetically, it leads our influencing themes. Um, command leads you to take charge. And it, it really is about having a, a comfort with helping direct where a group is going. It is about being persuasive, being able to affect the feelings of other people and, and doing it on purpose. A couple other sentences I love in this long definition, you're not frightened by confrontation. Rather, you know that confrontation is the first step toward resolution. Very often people see command and harmony as uh, opposites. Um, they're probably not logical pairs. Uh, they don't come from the same place, but I think they want the same thing. If you read this definition, it says that command will go through conflict because it helps us get to resolution. Harmony finds other places where we can get to resolution where there isn't conflict. So the difference isn't in the definition of the theme. The difference between those is the route they take to get to the same destination. And I just thought that was a, a really great piece to pull out of command of that, that courage to, to really go through some barriers or to have tough conversations or to confront assumptions that maybe need to be shaken up a little bit because what you're getting to is, is resolution or in many cases is progress. It can be a uh, command, I think sometimes also aims for influence, uh, being able to get everybody excited or rally people together or affect the way that other people feel. Just a couple other things defining command in this definition. It says you need things to be clear between people and challenge them to be clear-eyed and honest. You push people to take risks. You may intimidate them. And while some may resent this, labeling you as opinionated, they often willingly hand you the reins. I think about command as being, um, gosh, it's, it's, a, it's a theme that you wear on your sleeve in that influencing category. It is about how you affect the, the feelings, the emotions, the, the hearts and minds of other people. I have this image of you know, the kid on the playground that everybody tends to follow whether or not they know they're doing it. Um, it's, it's that natural ability to, to, to want to take the reins and to realize that it's almost a magnetism where people are drawn to giving you those reins. So a couple things about command. How does it look like in leaders? I'll be totally honest. I had the hardest time with command in describing it, uh, a leadership extension specific to command. In season three, our focus is leadership. And in a moment, we're going to speak to Rosie about being a leader with command and, and what that looks like for how she leads with it. The reason I struggled with it, though, is command in itself looks like leadership. So I had a hard time saying, well, how could this be different in a leader than it is in an individual contributor? So instead I went backwards and I said, what does command look like in an individual contributor versus a leader? And it, what I came up with is um, an individual with command aligns decisions with their own performance. A leader with command aligns actions with bigger goals. So those goals might be about the organization or about your team. Um, and I'll ask Rosie about this as well, but I will tell you in our pre-call yesterday, I, I ran that by her and she said, or maybe just once you're a leader, you finally got permission to lead the way that you've always been leading. So maybe that is it. Of course, all 34 themes can lead to excellent leadership. There's no dream sequence that you need to have in order to be a leader. Uh, command, I think the definition by itself just lends itself to leadership, maybe a little more effortlessly. It is a persuasive presence undeterred by opposition. That is uh, my best sentence that I have to, to discuss really what command is. I think barriers for people with, with command can create clarity, just like wind creates lift. I have a toddler in my home and lately one of his favorite movies is called The Secret Life of Pets. And we we purchased it uh, on a whim one night because it was on sale and it was uh, cheaper to own it than it was to, to rent it. And that was a good decision because we've watched this movie about 700 times since. One of my favorite scenes is in the very beginning, you get to see what all of these pets do when their owners leave. And so you get to see that the, one of the dogs um, decides to just bark at squirrels all day. Um, my, my son's favorite dog uses the blender as a massage machine is this tiny little bird named Sweet Pea. And as soon as Sweet Pea's owner leaves, she uh, turns on a fan and then she points the fan toward the TV and she goes and flies into the, the wind of the fan while she's watching these fighter jets. So it, it would be the equivalent of a human being on a treadmill and watching a video of where you're running. But it's just such a great image of that bird needs the wind in order to fly. 
that bird needs something facing her in her face in order to, to do what she wants to do. And I think about that quite often with command, you need a little bit of honest feedback, a little bit of pushback, um, and, and you might even get to better places with a little bit of that honest pushback. And that can come in the form of thinking about how your product is, uh, is or isn't going to land in the marketplace. It can come from customers. It can come from um, that idea of iron sharpening iron. And before you talk about an idea, maybe you practice by asking people who you know wouldn't naturally be on the same side. I just love that, that kind of clarity and that muscle that people with command can flex when they are um, in a place where they can really have a hard discussion. So think about um, a command probably can anticipate that pushback and can persuade people through it. Um, it can sometimes be hard to seek, especially the higher up you get as a leader. So it can be important to think about investing in your command by finding great think partners who will challenge your ideas. Make sure you're aligned from the very start. If you're somebody with command, aligned with the organization or with the team goals, because you're going to do better with fewer touch points and fewer check-ins. As I was reading in our Strengths-Based Leadership book, it said, how do you lead somebody with strong command? And the opposite side of that was understand they're not going to need a lot of touch points, and they're probably going to be more likely to be great on their own in more of an independent work style. So if you are that person, just make sure you've, you've gotten as crystal clear as you can about what the expectations are so that you can feel confident uh, going off on your own. Um, I also think a couple things to, to consider if you are a leader with command. Um, understand that assertive does not equal aggressive. Um, so how can you introduce your assertiveness without apologizing for it? Uh, I, I think about introducing a lot of big, bold themes before they introduce you. And with command, that might look like telling people, I'm not afraid of uh, opposition, or if there's something I believe in, I'm going to stand up for it, so that you can allow people to understand that, maybe on a, on a calm surface when, when everything is... Um, is agreeable it, when you're already at that resolution allow people to know that hey we're about to you know if things change you can count on me to stand up for it that way it lo looks like you making you know making true on your promise also think about connecting clarity and assertion that kind of clarity you bring or that kind of absolute uh, communication that you can bring with command connect that to productivity for people um, it, because command again is so rare it can be necessary for you to educate others uh, about where you're coming from if you feel like you're being misunderstood then go out of your way to talk about why taking a stance or why moving through a barrier versus going around it is going to have an advantage uh, and that might mean leaning into some of your other themes if you've got strategic help people see the very end if you've got um, woo help people see uh, what's in it for them uh, I think it's it's, it's a great uh, idea for any themes to really think about how do I help other people um, see the value in this so that they know when to come to me when I can give that value. The final part of the front page of our companion guide talks about the four needs of followers, trust, compassion, stability, and hope. I'm going to ask Rosie about this in her own life. But before we do that, and I'd, I'd love some feedback on whether this is helpful for you or not, I've decided just to use um, the, the bottom of this companion guide to give you some great questions that if you are a leader with this theme, you might want to ask yourself specific to these four needs. So a leader with command could build trust by really just being, I think this one's about authenticity. So the question I ask around trust is, what causes or projects should people always expect you to protect or defend? There's this beautiful protective nature about command that I think can feel like um, like a hug. <laughs> and, and that might not be the word you use when you think about command, but it's great for you to be real clear on what are those trigger points that you will always stand up for and how can you help other people know what those are. Um, around compassion. I think uh, I, ver I, I do quite a lot of uh, executive coaching, and very often I'll find with uh, a couple themes where we talk about how you can lend them to other people. How can people borrow your command in this situation? So the question I ask here is, where do you see potential in other people? 
and how can you help that help them see that in themselves? I think command can be a beautiful developmental tool. Um, it, it makes a, a pretty cool mentor who can say, uh, it, you know, I believe in you in a way that you might not believe in yourself. And to have that kind of command weight behind those sentences makes a big difference. So stretch that into um, how you can help other people by, by looking for opportunities to lend that command. Uh, with stability, uh, who needs you to intervene on their behalf? How can you put the fears of others at ease? So think about investing in that command by um, helping other people trust you and helping other people who might feel like the ground is uncertain or like the uh, situation is difficult. Other people might be intimidated by barriers where you might not be. Think about not just how you can go through that alone, but how can you help other people feel like things are going to be stable and, and like their fear of uncertainty or their fear of confrontation um, they can have, but that you've got it, like you can shoulder them. And finally, I love talking about hope. Um, the question I've got around command and hope is, what is the reason behind your current mission? How can you help others see the why behind what we're doing? So it's again, it's not just about charging forward on your own with command. I think command as, as a leadership extension and as stretching it into that leadership space is really about how you can um, help others come along with you, how, how you can stand for people um, as well as for causes. 